Well, so far, this canal road trip had been a great success. Despite our best laid plans going out of the window and our first destination looking like it had suffered an oxygen crash, we worked hard and found some stretches that contained some wonderful wild carp. Now we only had four days left, so needed to make a plan to maximize our time. We've often fallen foul to driving long distances, looking for that holy grail of locations and not actually fishing with rods in the water. However, this time, our efforts with pre-baiting other stretches of the canal were about to unfold beyond our wildest dreams. Yes! <laughs> Mate, give me a massive hug. That is amazing. That is the best yeah. fish ever. That is, mate. Mate, that is the best fish I've seen in such a long time. <laughs> Welcome to part two of our canal road trip. Sit tight as we embark on the last few days of an adventure we'll never forget. He's back. Right, I'll leave you to it. I'll um, I'll get this bait in. And I'll speak to you in a minute. Okay. Yeah, I'll get this bait in. I'll leave you in a minute. Cool. What turn up for the books that is? Getting a bite while I'm trying to work out where he wants his pre bait to be. So right, I think it's somewhere out here. So uh, somewhere sort of out here. So I'm gonna leave him to it a minute. Right, let's go. Get used to these if you watch our YouTube channel. Uh, but I've now got to walk back about a mile to uh, the van and get back in and hopefully go and see what Mark's caught. What a result. Well, that spot had now received two hits of Cremino and Atlantic heat across a three day period. The plan was to come back tomorrow to see if these nomadic canal carp had found the free meals on wheels. We knew very little about these canals, but one thing we did assume was that most stretches contained a small, low stock of carp. In these scenarios, pre-bait becomes a great asset to rely on. When you can't see them due to poor water clarity, we just have to rely on the bait to do its job. But for now, I was keen to get back to the small canal to see what Mark had caught. There you go, mate. That'll do, eh? They've got huge heads on them. They have, mate, yeah. Don't they? Yeah. Massive heads. And like, I don't know. They just look like they are all up front. Yeah. Not quite the French a la carte cuisine that I would think you might be hoping for. Mm. Mate, that looks wicked. But we've got mm. Thai green curry instead. Look at that. There we go. Come on. Bon appetit. Oh, yeah, mate. That's French, isn't it? Bon appétit. Yep. Bon appétit. Nah. Eating well on these road trips is something that's not always easy, but we try our best. However, tonight's meal was once again consumed on the towpath, while the day's events sunk in. In you go. Well done, mate. <laughs> yes. Good man. It was soon time for bed. Sleep is something we'd not really had much of in the last three days, and exhaustion was starting to kick in. This was our last night on this crazy urban canal. Did it have one more surprise in store for us before it was time to say farewell? We sincerely hope so, and we drifted off to sleep full of anticipation. Hey, morning, mate. Morning. morning. The cardigan is out. I can see it lurking around the corner there. That must mean one thing. Big fish, mate. Big fish. Yeah. I wore it last night, actually, with cardigan for the first time, didn't I? And, uh, always does me proud, the cardigan. Yeah. And it's done me proud again because... Oh, Steady on, mate. I've got, What's happened? I've got a 35-pounder in, in, uh, in the retainer down there. Yeah. Yes. Big cart morning. Yeah, mate, it's good. Really good. 
Well, what well a mate. Oh, classic Mark Bryant. Crocs. Blue cardigan. And uh, yeah, <laughs> classic fashion statement there from Mark Bryant. Who cares? Right, who cares? Good. Who cares? Who, who's gonna, who, there's no fashion police out here. <sighs> no, it's not. Have you washed it yet? No, it's never, never, ever been washed. The only time it gets a wash is when I, when I get in the water with a fish. Look at it, it just smells like a herring. <laughs> it smells like it's been on a trawler boat for a week. <laughs> <laughs> That's it, mate. We're there, we're ready. Ready to go? Insert carp. Insert carp, yeah. <laughs> Come on, let's do this. Oh yeah, he's been... <laughs> oh mate, it's, it's safe a, to say that that is a, a, a belly full of Atlantic heat. It is mate, Atlantic heat and Cremino. Yeah, he's been well on that, which is a good sign. <laughs> it's all in the sack and everywhere. <laughs> You're going to get carp poo all over your hand this morning. Yeah, that's right. That's nice. That's nice. <sighs> Last morning result on this <laughs> wicked little canal. I'm a biggest fish to date. <laughs> he looks pumped right up, Mark. Yeah. Long barbels, overslung mouth. Well, lovely one, eh? what a lovely way to end if this is the last one. Yeah, the blue cardigan strikes again. <laughs> oh mate, that's a really nice one. Totally different shape to the rest. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Well worth all that effort. Yeah. Look at that. Tiny canal. <laughs> Big guy. Massive fish, yeah. There we go. Thanks, mate. Oh. Mwah. A lovely way to end the morning here. Yes. yes! Mate, what a way to end. Lovely. Absolutely lovely. The cardigan's wet. That's what it's there for. It gets its wash, doesn't it, no? I bet it weighs... I bet it's like an anchor. <laughs> it's getting bigger and bigger, mate, now. It's like a, a triple XL. But who cares, mate? And uh, that's great. What a session we've had here, eh? Mate, incredible little little time. 24 hours. Well, that's 36 hours. Five 30-pounders. Yeah. Four 20-pounders. Yeah. And a 44. 44, mate. I'm an absolute monster. And so. possibly another one before we go. Well, who knows? But hey, we're going to uh, venture on to uh, the little canal, or the big canal where we pre baited. Um, and who knows, mate, what's going to happen there? But yeah. Right. What, a lovely, what a lovely session so far. Fantastic. Oh my god, he's gone. <laughs> right. After Mark's impression of Daniel Craig and his alfresco shower, it was soon time to once again pack the van. We headed off to another canal to scope out a few areas for future trips. However, the idea of a pizza, a cold drink, and a rest soon got the better of us. A little pit stop for lunch, but... Oh, mate, <laughs> we know it's pizza. We've definitely got pizza. Does, uh, does any of that make any sense to you? Well, not at the moment, but... I don't know. So, so... Mate, GCSE French seems oh, a long, long time ago. ago mate. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I know, yeah. all I know is Tony à gauche, Tony à droite, left and right. Ali tout droit, straight on. Mate, I can't help but think, the more times we come over here, the more I realise that we're pretty ignorant, aren't we? Yeah, we need to learn a bit. There's, the, there's no excuses for not at least getting your way through in Europe with a little bit of basic language. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, mate, let's go and let's have a look, it's good. Google oh. Translate, get it out. Yeah, exactly. Come on. Ready? Bon appétit, mate. Bon appétit, indeed. Mate, we deserve this. <laughs> it's been hard work, hasn't it, the last couple of days? Hard work. Hard oh, work. Come on, hard, hard work. Hard work catching carp. Yeah, yeah. Nice problem to have, as always. 
think it's just a nice little break, mate, from the from the hunting and the looking. Bit of civil civilization. Would we have come in here if you wouldn't have had a bath in the canal this morning? Mm, don't, no, we'd have probably gone to some sort of yeah. greasy spoon, wouldn't we? Yeah, or, yeah. or a takeaway. You're looking fresh. <laughs> Not as fresh as that, mate. I'm gonna have to put this down. Let's uh, let's get stuck in. Yeah, man. Well, here we are. We've just arrived for another destination. Mike's unpacking. Yeah, unpacking, and uh, stuff is everywhere. But we've got a bit of a plan, haven't we? If you would have, I think I filmed it yesterday, baiting this up when you yep. had your take. That's right, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. You had your take. So that was about an hour round trip, but we've put two lots of bait in across three days, Mark. Three days, yeah. Three days now. Two baiting trips over three days. Yeah, and the water clarity is chocolate. We're not going to see anything. It is complete potluck. We know that, you know, history tells us that this strip of canal in France has some big fish, but we're going to yeah. unload. And I think just for security, this looks a bit barren in the middle of nowhere. I'm then gonna load the barrows, drive the van somewhere near some houses to leave it. Hopefully that's a little bit of a safer place. But do you know when you get a feeling? Do you know when you get a feeling that something good's gonna happen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know why, I just think this is we good. are gonna catch a bit. Yeah, it's what I like to hear, mate. Yeah. And this is, a, this is a bit of a punt tonight, isn't it? Because we don't know much about this section. We know there's potentially some big ones. And as you said, we've put some bait in and it's a, uh, why not? We'll come back for a night. Let's see what happens. Mate, we've looked everywhere today. We've looked yeah. at another half a dozen spaces, purely Google Maps, looking at open it up. All oh, think that looks interesting. Oh, there's an island now. What does that look like? Let's go and have a look. And we can't see anything, the water clarity. So yeah, it's, yeah. Drop on the pre bait. Let's see if it's done its job. Yeah, let's do it. Right. Come on. Let's get this all sorted out. Mate, it's a Jenga again. Van Jenga. Yeah. We should be good at Van Jenga by now, but we're not because these bikes take yeah. up stupid amounts of room. Yeah. Well, the walk alone felt exhausting. It was easily a mile with a fully loaded barrow. Now, upon arrival, we weren't even sure the canal was fishable. There was floating weed, huge boats, and a flow that could easily move a four ounce lead. But we waited a few hours, got some fresh baits tied on, and around 8 p.m. the lock gates must have shut. As the flow stopped, the weed settled, so just when we were thinking of calling it a day and heading back to the van, the canal's dynamics totally changed and it was time to get some rods out. What a nightmare, I've just, just had an absolute, <laughs> oh man. Oh, I've just lost something really big, really big, an absolute one toner. It's just flat one of me and, yeah. Oh. I've done all the hard work, got it all the way back into my margin and it come up really heavy fish and hooks just popped absolutely fucking gutted oh man yeah we don't know what's in this canal we know there's some good fish but we think it's very low stock so yeah to lose one is just absolutely sickening <sighs> fucking shaking <laughs> <laughs> right, well, I've popped the rod back out, that's out. And the other rod, I've just had a liner on, a couple of beeps, so who knows. But it is about, I don't know, two, three o'clock in the morning. I need to get some sleep. Right, over and out.
Why are you so glum? Mate, look at this. It's a great morning. Oh, mate, no, I'm, no, it is a fantastic morning. It is a fantastic morning. But then we just, we've been awoken by uh, a tight, a flow on a canal, which is, um, obviously something's happening, but there's loads of weed coming through. It's just wiped all the rods out. It went that way for like an hour, and now it's just stopped. It's, it's gone the other way, and now it's going back the same way it went this morning, first, at first like this morning. So, yeah, yeah not ideal, but. There's massive weed bugs, uh, you'll see, because I took some, pit, um, some footage of it. There's huge weed bugs literally floating on the surface and it's just taking our rods out. So yeah. we're only, well, we've got to go. We've got to pack up. Uh, you can't fish this during the day by the looks of things. And I can only Oof. assume that's down to lock gates or something being open. Yeah, it must be. Yeah, it must be. Don't know what's quite happening, but yeah, something's happening. And yeah, I didn't expect that. <laughs> Who cares though? Who cares? Because yeah, mate. you've got a mega carp in the... Uh, in the sack that you had literally what five o'clock this morning half five yeah something like that before this flow uh, started yeah, yeah well it's seven o'clock now so um we're gonna have to do the pictures bit of video yeah and mate. once again back on the road but, yeah yeah mate what a carp every yeah. night we have gone fishing on this adventure we caught a 30 pounder oh, or bigger yeah been very blessed this uh this session haven't we very blessed let's uh let's do the do because uh you can probably hear my my sailor box beeping that's the weed bugs once again taking me out wiping you out so uh, yeah, let's get it. Let's get it done. Get on the road. Let's do it. Ah. Oof. Look at that, mate. How do we? Wow. So clean. Yeah. So clean. Look. Open his mouth again. It looks so clean. Yeah, clean's a whistle that one. There we go, there's the old Cremino there. That's a bit of tiger that we put out last night as our insurance policy. Yeah. <laughs> and then that is uh, a little zebra mussel. So yeah, they've been well on, uh, well on the much tonight. There's little bits of shell in there as well. More Cremino, and more, more tiger. The diet of a wild carp. Yeah. Wow, what a morning, mate. <laughs> Yeah, bit of a punt last night in terms of uh, coming here because we just didn't know, didn't see anything, but the bait's done its job, hasn't it? There's a Cremino and that coming out of this fish and the odd bit of tiger and shell that we've already, already seen. But uh, yeah, mate, such a such an amazing morning. What a brute, what an absolute yeah. brute. Don't know how often these carp get caught, but rarely, Yeah. rarely. Thank you, mate. Wow! Oh. Yes! Covered in grass. Doesn't matter. Yes! Come on, time oh, to go. <laughs> oh, it's a little bug. You ain't coming with me. You are on. Let's go! Come on, mate. You go first. You can see if there's any divots. <laughs> oh, there's, there's one. one. <laughs> Well, that's good. Obviously, I left the van quite a way away from the canal last night with the hope it's in a bit more of a residential area. You never want to leave something in the middle of nowhere, and I'm sure it's absolutely safe, but uh, walk to the van, all good. By the time I get back, Mark should have got breakfast ready, berries and all our usuals to uh, power us through the day. Load the van, and we are off again, but this time another four hours deep into France. So long journey, long, 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 uh, long drives, but hopefully gonna be worth it. Having left Mark with the kit, I drove the van back to load up. However, we had another plan and felt we just couldn't leave this canal without giving it another hit of Atlantic heat and Cremino, plus a few tigers. Now it would have been logical to bait up when we left. However, we didn't take bait up with us the previous night due to the long walk and the weight on the barrows. So we decided to repack some rucksacks with plenty of cart food and simply ride all the way back to the same spots we'd left about an hour before just to reapply some more bait for when we plan to return in a few days time. Come on. Look at that. 5 PSI. Yeah, that's not good. Not the best. All good. Yeah. 
Sadly, our old bikes weren't really made for this bumpy old canal terrain, but we continued to work our socks off, as so far everything was falling into place perfectly. I think the old saying goes, if you fail to prepare, then be prepared to fail. And that simply wasn't part of our plan. With another banquet of food spread liberally across six spots, we could now leave knowing that the bait would hopefully help us carve another chance when we plan to return in just a few days time. Well, we're here, mate. Destination number five or six, but this track doesn't look like it's fit for anything apart from a tractor. Not very you <coughs> Jesus. Not very user Christ. friendly. <laughs> Making the right decisions on these trips is crucial. Now in hindsight, this one was the worst decision we made. We actually took a tip off that meant driving over four hours across country as we'd been told about a complex of gin clear lakes that held some lovely carp. It sounded too good to be true. However, on arrival, we quickly got escorted off the land, only to be told the complex was purchased two years prior and was now private property with no public access. We were devastated. It was a long way to drive to be told that we couldn't actually get nowhere near the lakes we hoped we'd be fishing. However, we still found a canal system nearby and dropped on it for a night. But with no pre-baiting, it was a tall order to expect anything more than a good night's sleep. We both agreed that driving all the way back we came, early the next day, another four and a half hours, would be the best decision. That's a wrap, our trip around the world for a quick overnighter. Means we're back on the road at half past six. Nothing occurred. Although Mark does look like he's the Rambling Society Committee Chairman from the Cotswold Rambling Club. Look at them. Look at them, mate. Yeah, the beauties, isn't we? He needs some little walking sticks to uh, to get you around these days. Nice headband. Yeah, headband, rucksack, camel pack with a with some water and um, one of those flexi straws in your mouth. <laughs> Rambling Chairman, Mr. Bryant, Cotswold Rambling Association. Right, time to pack up. Unfortunately, that's the first night that we have caught nothing. We were due a night like this, to be fair. But our decision to drive back was the best idea of the whole adventure, but we just didn't know it at the time. Not wanting to drop onto the heavily pre-baited canal, a day after we put all that bait in, we decided to find a river spot for a night and let the pre-bait do its thing for another 24 hours. Well, it's day five and once again, Mr. Nature himself, Mr. Bryant, Mr. Tarzan, or the Cotswold Rambling Chairman, has found himself a little bit of the wet stuff to wash himself in. I don't know if we need parental advisory. I'm sure he's got his underwear on. But he's down there having a good old wash. And yeah, getting himself back to nature. I have no doubt in a minute he's gonna come swimming past me. Oh, there he goes. Yep, classic Bryant move that is. <laughs> oh dear, brilliant. To be honest, I'm gonna do the same in a minute. It's so hot. It's so, so warm. But we managed to pump the boat up down there. I think you can see it. Where we're fishing is an absolute cliff. There's a bit of a treacherous kind of way down here. And uh, yeah, if we get one, that'd be uh, interesting. The rods are gonna be up here. And obviously we're gonna be fishing to sort of these far bank snags. Probably split the rods up. Two over there, minor marks two over here, minor marks, and sort of two over there, minor marks, sort of splitting up the river a little bit. We're back on the river. Yeah, we're just two nights to go. Well, after hours and hours of looking, the spot we fancied just didn't have any areas that easily accessed the river. 
so we ended up fishing off the edge of a sandy cliff. The joys of wild carp fishing, you could say. The day started to slip by as they do, but Mark got his rods positioned first by simply gliding across to the snaggy margins and leading around until he found some firm ground with a good depth of water. Bait-wise, well, we knew the river contained lots of chub and bream, so we ended up spreading around a kilo of big baits over each rod with presentations that would hopefully keep the other species away long enough for the carp to slip up. While well, the sun is setting, we've just managed to get five of the six rods out. Got this last rod to get out. And I must admit, this is a beautiful location. If we could have a carp to match, well, this is just the perfect location to watch the sunset go down. I'm gonna grab a pizza in a minute. And uh, yeah, we feel quite confident. It's a perfect spot. It's another river. And uh, as it bends round, you've got two rivers that join together and a lovely snaggy margin and far margin. So I think we've got the area pretty covered. That's what we're using. So we're using big, heavy bottom baits. Now one thing we learned, actually Mark caught a lovely 30 pounder earlier on the week. One thing we've learned when we fish these rivers is you don't want any buoyancy in your bait. I made that mistake um, oh, about six months ago in Belgium where I had my usual snowman rigs on with a bit of buoyancy on a flowing canal. And what happened with these big heavy leads is that pins that down and then with a bit of buoyancy, the rig's like wafting in the flow and it just blunted the hook. So the heavier the bait, the better. We've either got big 24s, this one's tipped with a tiger nut, or Mark's got double 18s, I've got double 24s on. So hopefully those rigs are not wafting about. Well, they'll still move, of course they will, because there's a flow on this river, but it'll be as limited as we can get it. So uh, that's the plan, that's the rig. Last rod to get out, pizza ordered. Well, I'm gonna go and get it. And uh, hopefully next time we look down this camera, be with another river carp. The pizza sadly was average, but just as we were drifting off to sleep, we got rudely interrupted by a fireworks display just a few fields behind the bivvy. It was well past 11pm before the river finally fell back into its blissful state of peace and sleep soon followed. Oh, here we go. Don't know what time it is. Don't know what time it is, Mike, do we? But it's... Yeah, I do. <laughs> what is the time? I'm a bit more awake than you. Yeah, what is <laughs> What time is it? <laughs> Mate, you didn't have a clue what was going on. No. It's, um, it's half past five. Jesus. So it's going to get light in about... I don't know, an hour. Yeah. And uh, I've just popped your fish in the sling, just off the end of the boat there. So within an hour, it's going to be light. So uh, bloody hell, that was a ripper, wasn't it? Mate, it was, that yeah. Was an absolute ripper. Like, uh, right, it, Mark, do my talk. Mark. <laughs> we do my torch, there we go. You come out, you didn't know where the hell you were. Yeah, a bit. You were all over the place. I was a bit <laughs> disorientated, to be fair, but um, we managed to get it in. Mike got his, uh, um, Oh, I can't even speak. You got your uh, wellies. That's what I'm looking for. Wellies. Wellies on. We managed to get out and net a, a, a common. So we got a common in the net. Not the biggest of fish, but very welcome. Very, very welcome. Yeah, and I tell you what, at, at half past five in the morning when you're in a deep sleep dreaming about big carp, you have to slide down this bank on your bum. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. Uh, it's no mean feat, mate. <laughs> certainly not, Mark. Yeah. When, certainly not when you're wearing long johns. <laughs> That's it, mate, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a hand up, because I'm going to try and get right, an hour right. of sleep, and we'll uh, sort this one out when it gets light. Right, good okay, care, steady on. That's it, yeah, grab that little branch there. That's it. Come on, give me a pop. That's it. Nice. Right. Right, I'll keep him retained down there for an hour and it'll be light then and we'll uh, 
get the pictures. Hopefully, we'll have a, another one to join them. Ooh. Back to bed. Back to bed, mate. Well, nature's alarm clock soon kicked in, and another incredible dawn chorus began to echo around the river's valley. We let the sun rise before we grabbed the camera to snap a few quick shots of another beautiful river carp. Ah. <laughs> Mate, this was the culprit of an absolute screamer last night. Well, 5.30 this morning, nobody wants to be woken up from a deep slumber, do they? No. Yeah. They can't all be monsters, mate. No, that's right. Mate, he's very welcome, wasn't he? Yeah, very welcome. Just well. not, not at that time in the morning. Probably never been caught. Yeah, perfect made for him, isn't it? Oh, well, mate, we get a quick snap of him. Don't we? Yeah, yeah. River, river, a river fish is a river fish. Yeah, mate, yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at this. Proper angry little male, this one. <laughs> yeah. Full of testosterone. And uh, had a bit of power going downstream. <laughs> mate, that take was blistering, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. It went off like a rocket. Those fireworks last night. Yeah. Um, I thought one of those rockets has somehow caught your line. It literally <laughs> shot from zero to about 80 miles an hour. Yeah, and it's both panicking, didn't it? Yeah. Both panicking. That's the best bit of fishing, though, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It can still make you feel like that. That's right. Yeah, but, mate, yeah. Little comment. Not quite what we're after, but you can't pick them, can you? Yeah. Mate, I wonder if that common nose is being held up by Indiana Jones. <laughs> that jacket is just... Leave my jacket alone. ...is amazing. Mate, a wax cotton in Indiana Jones sort of uh, throwback. Bargain basement, this was like 20 quid. <laughs> right, let's get him back, mate. Let's get him back. Well, that was it. In a blink of an eye, the week was coming to a close. However, so much work and effort had gone into this final canal spot. With three specific trips to bait up throughout the week complete, it was now time to drop some rigs into the areas for less than 12 hours fishing. There are so many reasons why we've fallen in love with this European public fishing scene. But fishing without the intense angling pressures and having the ability to build opportunities through baiting areas has felt incredibly refreshing. Another one has been fishing for unknown, or at least far less documented carp. Now having said that, the reason I decided to start fishing Europe in the first place was down to a single picture of a carp I once saw in subsurface. It stopped me in my tracks. It was a real huge framed carp and a linear on one side. I remember its huge head and overslung mouth was big enough to eat an orange. It was one of those real one-of-a-kind sort of carp. Now I kept that picture and after many years I was sure I'd track down its location. Now nothing is certain with canals as gates can open and close and carp as you can imagine can come and go. But we'd spoken about this carp all week and we took a punt on its home. The final push with the barrows was over a mile once again, and immediately we were met with a few challenges. Tearing up the bottom as well. <laughs> yeah, you've got to pick and choose your times when you put the rods out. Yeah, right? look at dirty water behind it, look. that's ripping up the bottom as it goes through there, and all the weed is moving. You can see why these canals probably don't get much attention, they are a logistical nightmare. Yeah. With all this floating weed, you can't get line lay. Every hour, you've got to skip the rod in and make sure the boat goes through. There's some turbulent water everywhere. It's, uh, it's, not, it's not easy fishing, you can't just pop them out, sit back and think, ah, oh, let's enjoy a, a peaceful day's angling. 
yeah, totally out of the question. These have been skipped in throughout this uh, duration where we popped around different canals every hour, Mark. Yeah, got All been, in, yeah. out, in, out, floating weed bergs. It's just, uh, but yeah, hopefully the effort will be rewarded in the end, but yeah, yeah. if not, we'll catch a boat. That's the one, isn't it? We couldn't get the rods out till 8 p.m. once the boat traffic had stopped, but each rod went out with firm fuds. The areas all felt cleaner, almost down to gravel. Something had most certainly fed on these spots this week. So as you can imagine, the atmosphere and anticipation became electric. Mate, look at the size of his head. I know, I've only just hooked him look, as well. Yeah, right on the edge there, but... Mate, they like that bait, don't they? They love it. Look at that. Oh, yes, 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 yes. As dawn broke, we had a fairy tale ending to the trip. That carp, the one I'd kept a picture of for all those years, was in the bottom of Mark's net. This is an absolute giant, isn't it? Mate, this is a monster. <laughs> no Look way did we think we were going to have this in the tr Oh my goodness. Oh my golly gosh. Yeah. What is that? It's Cremino, Tiger Nut, all coming out. Oh. <sighs> Loads of Atlantic heat. God dear. Some carp that much. Yeah, he's a bigger mate, look at that. Look at that. I'm not sure you're gonna be catching a better one anytime soon. <laughs> Especially from the venues that we fished. No, that's it, look at that. Oh. <laughs> right, this is gonna be hard, but you know. Wow mate, what an absolute monster. <laughs> 53 pounds and 14 ounces. 14 yeah. ounces. Look at the shape of it. Jesus Christ, wow, mate. What a carp. What a carp. What a fish. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> Absolute public fishing trip dream. Mate, <laughs> what a fish. <laughs> it's laughing, it's so bloody big. It's so big. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Something special that mate. Yeah it is. Well done. Massive well done. <sighs> Getting back. Time to get back mate. Yeah. We've got to get on the road. I'll put this down and give you a hand. Yeah. Come on mate. Yes. <laughs> mate, give me a massive hug. That is amazing. That is the best yeah. fish ever. That is, mate. mate, that is the best fish I've seen in such a long time. <laughs> oh my god. <sighs> mate, spent. Look at the state of you. I know. Yeah. I know, mate. This is crazy. It's good. Come on. This is good. Come on, let's, uh, oh, let's enjoy this. Fantastic. We'll Absolutely put this down fantastic. because uh, we want to just sit down and embrace it all. That's just right. let that sink in. Just let that moment sink in. Jeez. I actually caught one myself that morning. A perfectly conditioned canal common. But this was Mark's moment. Getting to share it was extra special. These trips just galvanised friendships and the memories will last a lifetime. Viva la carpa! <laughs> <laughs>